Hi everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. For today's VBOTS tutorial video, we'll be working on a wall following project. Throughout this tutorial series, we've learned how to build a differential drive robot, work with motors, and even work with distance sensors. We'll be combining all of these concepts to work on our wall following robot. In this VBOTS tutorial, I'm writing the controller code in C. If you want to see the controller code in different programming languages such as C++ and Python, look for the link in the description below. I'll include all of the timings here and in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start by creating a new project. Click on the menu bar, Wizards, New Project Directory. Click Continue. Give your project a name. I'm calling it Wall Follower Robot. Click Continue. Give a name to your world. I'm calling mine world underscore maze. Make sure to select Add a Rectangular Arena and click Continue. Click Done and this will load a new world with a rectangle arena. We'll start by increasing the size of our arena. Click on the rectangular arena on the scene tree. Click on Floor Size. Make X and Y is equal to 2. Next, we'll add a robot in our VBOTS world. To do this, click on the plus sign. Next, type epoch in the search bar. Select the epoch robot and click add to add the robot. Make sure to save your work. Next, we'll create our maze using walls. Once again, click on the plus sign and type wall in the search bar. Select wall and click on add to add this wall to our VBOTS world. As you can see, it created a huge wall. Let's change the size. Click on the wall in your scene tree on the left hand side. Select size and change y is equal to 0.1 meter and z is equal to 0.01 meter. To make it easy to reshape the wall or any object in VBOTS, let's add the coordinate system. From the menu bar, select view, optional rendering and show coordinate system. To rotate the wall, click on the rotation option under wall on the scene tree. With x equal to 0, y equal to 1, z equal to 0, make your angle equal to 1.57 radians. Next, let's move the wall by changing the translation values. Let's make x equal to minus 0.07 meter. Let's add another wall. Select wall and use keyboard shortcut to copy and duplicate it by pasting. Once again, by changing the translation and rotational values, you can move the wall in different configurations. Using multiple walls, you can build your own maze. If you want to use the maze shown in this video, you can download it from the link in the description below. Now that our VBOTS world is set up with the robot and the maze, Let's start on our controller. To do this, go to the top menu bar, click on Wizards, New Robot Controller, click Continue. I'm choosing the programming language C and Continue. Give a name to your controller and click Continue. Make sure to select Open the Editor and click done. As you can see, it will open the controller code on the right side of our VBOTS window. The comments in the default VBOTS controller code are pretty descriptive and gives you a good idea on how you should set up your code. For the first part, you will initialize your variables. This includes your motors and sensors. The next part is your while loop that will keep running until your VBOTS simulation is stopped. In here, you first read the sensors, then process the sensor data to make decisions on how your robot should drive and compute the different speeds. Next, you pass the speed to your actuator that is a motor to drive the robot. And once you stop your simulation, the code goes into cleanup mode and stops. So let's get started. As I mentioned before, the first step is to initialize your motors. To do this, we'll also need to include the motor's header. Next, 
Let's initialize the motors for our epoch. I'm choosing to call them left motor and right motor. For our epoch, the motors are called left wheel and right wheel motor. This information is available on the VPOTS documentation. Alternatively, you can also look it up on the VPOTS scene tree. Convert your epoch into a base node, which is robot. And then under robot, children, hinge joint, device, rotational motor, name. You can see it's called left wheel motor. The same information is available for right wheel motor as well as the sensors. Let's go back to our code. To initialize our motor, we'll set the position to infinity and velocity to zero. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. Next, we'll enable our distance sensor, also called proximity sensors. To use them, we'll add the distance sensor header. I'm first creating an array of WB device tag type to hold all the proximity sensors. EPUC has eight proximity sensors from PS0 to PS7. I'm creating a loop to go through all the sensors I'll compute the name using sprintf. and using WB robot get device to get the sensor. Next, I'm using WB distance sensor enable to enable them using time step. Because I'm using sprintf, I'll include the stdio header file. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. For the wall following project, we'll only be making use of three sensors. Sensor 5 to detect the left wall, sensor 7 to detect the front wall, and sensor six to detect the left corner, which will be helpful to ensure the robot doesn't get too close to the wall. To obtain the value of sensor, we'll use WB distance sensor get value. Based on my experimentation, 
I know that the wall gets detected when the sensor value is more than 80. So I'll use that as an indicator to detect the left wall. And store the results in bull left wall. Similarly, I'll create left corner and front wall variables. Now let's understand the wall following logic that will be used to solve the maze. As the name suggests, the robot will follow a wall. You can choose a side, I'm choosing left. The robot has to drive in such a way to follow the left wall. When the wall is on its left and there is nothing in front of the robot, it can simply drive forward. If it detects a wall in front of the robot, it is essentially in a corner. It should drive right to continue. Now, if there is an upcoming left turn, the wall on the left side will disappear. So if there is no wall on the left, the robot has to take left. And the same concept will also work for a U-turn. This brings us to the last case. That is, there is no wall on the left hand side and there is a wall in front of the robot. Since we are following the left wall, a robot needs to turn such that the wall is on the left side. This can be done by simply turning right on the spot. With this understanding, now let's compute the speed for left motor and right motor. In VBOTS, EPUG drives at a max speed of 6.28. Let's create that as a global variable. Next, I'll create two variables, left speed and right speed, to drive left and right motor. Amongst our four cases, we can see that there are two cases wherein if the wall is in front of the robot, the robot should drive right so that it can follow the wall on the left side. In our previous tutorial, I have gone over how to alter different speeds so that the robot can drive straight, left, turn in place or turn while driving ahead. So I'll skip it for now. Else, that is to say there is no wall in front of EPUC, then the robot should decide if there's a wall on the left side or not. If there is a wall on left side, then continue driving straight. Else, you have to turn left so that you can follow the wall which was left behind.
I had to experiment a few times to figure out what speed worked well. For me, that was left speed at 1 8 and right speed at full to drive left and find the wall again. The last step is to give the speed to our actuator, which is motors for EPUC, to drive it ahead. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. Since this code was written in C, we have to compile it. So click on the gear icon to build this project. As you can see, I have generated an error which seems to be a typo. Let's save and compile again. Before we can run the VBOT simulation, make sure to change the controller for your robot in the VBOTS world. So go to the VBOTS scene tree and under robot, look for controller. Click on select and make sure to select your code. Click OK and make sure to save your VBOTS world. Now let's run the VBOT simulation by clicking on the play icon. As you just saw, the robot went too close to the left ball and ended up colliding. To resolve this, we'll make use of the sensor reading that was recorded in the left corner. Let's reset the VBOT simulation and go back to our code. Under the else condition, we will check if we see the left corner. If we do, then we'll go a bit more right so that we do not collide into the wall. Make sure to save your VBOTS controller code and build it again. And click on the plus icon to run the VBOTS simulation. And as you can see, it does much better now. Depending on your configuration, you might have to tweak the values to get the best performance. If you found this video helpful, make sure to tell me in the comments below. Also, if you have any doubts or questions, ask in the comments below. Also, show your support by liking the video and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.